<laughs> Mota Karwa, Raila Odinga's running mate in the last general election, has actually embarked on a wild goose chase in Arusha. Last week, Mota Karwa filed a case at the East African Court of Justice, challenging the ruling by the Supreme Court of Kenya. And I want to ask you a question. What do you think is the real objective of Martha Karwa going to that particular court? Because that court cannot nullify the presidential elections in Kenya. According to Kenyan constitution, Supreme Court is the one which determines all election or the all the presidential petitions in the country. And the Supreme Court already made their decision. But this is not going to be the first time Martha Karwa is actually seeking justice in this particular court. In 2019, Martha Karwa sought justice from this court after the Supreme Court ruled against her in a case pitting her and, uh, and uh, Kirinyaga governor Anwaiguru. Of course, she got justice. The court ruled in, his, in her favor and she was awarded some 25,000 US dollars. Of course, she claimed that was nothing based on the amount of money she spent on that particular case. Martha Karwa is a young lady, but I'm not sure whether she's going to get justice. This is purely a wild goose chase. According to Martha Karwa, she's faulting IBC for the for shoddy job in the presidential uh, petition. Of course, anybody who understands Kenyan politics, the Supreme Court of Kenya is a political court. And they are ruling, they are ruling in the last petition was surely. The terms they used, and the other day I saw Martha Kome trying to justify why they used those terms. Majority of lawyers in this country agree that that petition, I mean, that uh, ruling was probably written by a particular judge they know. And that judge is normally allied to William Ruto. So I don't know whether the Arusha court will uh, find IBC for doing a shoddy job. I don't know. The other thing she's talking about is that the Supreme Court dismissed their case without proper hearing. Of course, that's okay, but I'm not very sure. Okay? Martha Karwa is also seeking uh, justice because IBC ceded control of its system to external service providers. Remember the Jose Camargo story. So Martha Karwa still believes very strongly that Jose Camargo, that William Ruto is actually a product of Jose Camargo, and that uh, she's also seeking from the courts that the Supreme Court registrar failed to render true results from the scrutiny of election materials. Remember, the Supreme Court ordered the, some ballot boxes to be recounted. The report which the Supreme Court registrar filed and the reports which other parties filed were completely different. Some Form 34As were missing. I mean, a lot, a lot were discovered, but the registrar in their reports to the Supreme Court judges, their reports was actually different. So Martha Karwa is telling the court, I don't know whether she'll have additional, uh, uh, additional evidence, but she wants the court to render true results. And lastly, <laughs> Martha Karo wants the regional court to order Kenyan authorities to conduct investigations into all this. You know, if IBC mismanage the elections, they want the court to order, <laughs> I mean, to order Kenyan authorities to conduct investigations. Tell me, if William Ruto could manage to outweigh these guys as an outsider, is there a chance, really, I'm just asking, is there a chance that now with him as the president, having now appointed a new inspector general of police who is allied to him, 
a man who threw tear gas at Rail, uh, Rail Odinga supporters, a man who is known for so many things, do you think they can conduct, I mean, investigations? It can't happen. I was just reading the, the story on um, the Daily Nation. This is what she's saying. Kenyan electoral management body and Supreme Court subverted democracy and undermined the rule of law through their actions in the 2022 presidential election. <laughs> hey, Martha Karwa is, I, I don't know. The, the Supreme Court refused to examine all the evidence presented before it, neglected to fully inquire into technology applied, while condoning IBC cover-up. Of course, IBC, just like I've always maintained on this, on this channel, that the Supreme Court of Kenya had a predetermined outcome in the case. And Martha Karo is also saying, Supreme Court refused to examine all the evidence presented before it, neglected to fully inquire into technology applied, while condoning IBC's cover-up in refusing to grant access to its technology, which was critical to determine the matter in regards. So, I don't know what Martha Karo really expects. I don't know. But uh, for me, this is purely a waste of time. I don't know what you think. For me, it's pure waste of time. Because this court, even if they were to grant Mother Karwa all her prayers, what next? Nothing. So for me, if I were Mata Karwa, I would focus on three things right now. The first thing I would focus on is the 2027 general election. Martha Karo must decide whether she's going to be a player in 2027 election or not. If she wants to be a player in 2027 general election, then this is the time for her to start preparing. What I mean by preparing is that Martha Karo needs now to start reaching out to his Kikuyu brothers and sisters. And ask them the tough question. Why they rejected her? And after getting answers to that question, then she can work on her weaknesses. That's the first thing. Focus on 2022. Then after dealing with the Kikuyus, Martha Karua then needs to now start going to Rai Odinga strongholds and explain herself. Because let's face it, majority of Rail Odinga supporters from Rail Odinga's traditional support base believes that Martha Karwa did not deliver the votes. It's Rail Odinga who's been trying to convince them that the Kikuyu is voted. But if you look at the presidential outcome in Kirinyaga and even the way they voted for the MCA, MCA was voted for in Martha Karwa's ward, UDA. Member of Parliament, Gishigu, UDA. Women rep, UDA, Senator. So it means Red Odinga supporters believe that there, there was something wrong. Well, on the other side, Kalonzo Musioka really delivered. And it's, it's clear. So Martha Karwa can then now start going out to this former traditional Red Odinga support base and explain herself to them. That the, the reasons you are seeing those results is because the outcome is not a true reflection. She has to deal with it right now focus on 2022 whether Odinga is going to run or not because mother Karo might want to run for the presidency she might want to team up with kalonzo musioka mother Karo might want to be really Odinga's running mate again that will only be possible if she can focus on 2022 these are the things she's following wild goose chase she should forget about them the second thing Mata Karwa must start focusing on is how to discredit the Supreme Court of Kenya politically and locally. You know, after the last election, something has been happening. William Ruto has embarked on a journey of capturing all sectors in this country. He has already captured the church. William Ruto has now successfully captured the judiciary. The other day, I saw the Deputy Chief Justice justifying the friendship with the, with the executive. And, you know, she was not making sense. The only person 
who has consistently been now trying to remind the judiciary about their role is Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, who's been telling the Chief Justice off about this idea of sleeping with the executive. So Martha Karua must embark now on a journey of discrediting that particular ruling. Talk about it. Point out the weaknesses. Pile pressure on the judiciary. Make she can even point out and identify specific chief justices, I mean the Supreme Court judges, specific ones. Because this ruling is known how it, it happened. I mean, money exchange hands. And even if it did not happen, this is politics. Let Martha Carona focus on the Supreme Court. Pile pressure on them. Deal with them politically. And lastly, hope. Sell hope to Azimio. Instead of wasting time going to Arusha, and Arusha will take one year, they'll give you justice. What next? What will happen? Arusha will say, okay, the Supreme Court ill. They made a mistake here. The, the evidence was okay. The, the, the scrutiny was not conducted well. What happens next? She must now start selling hope to Azimio supporters. Why? Because Azimio supporters are tired. They voted. I mean, you, it, it's very difficult for anybody to convince Ray Ludinga supporters that they can vote and their votes will count. Right now, if I ask you guys whether you can, you will be able to vote again. You will find individuals here who will, not, who will just say that they will not vote if elections were held. So she must go back and start selling them hope that all is not lost instead of going to Arusha for one year. <laughs> I don't know what you think, but that's purely my thought. Bye-bye.